In the 1990s, Lyle and Eric Menendez were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the savage murders of their parents. But recently, their sentences have provoked controversy. So will the Menendez brothers see freedom in their lifetimes? The Menendezes seemed like a perfect example of the American dream come to fruition. Jose Menendez immigrated from Cuba after the Cuban Revolution in the 1950s. Once in the United States, he lived in his cousin's attic until he earned a scholarship to Southern Illinois University. That's where Jose met Kitty, and the two married in 1964. Kitty was an elementary school teacher, but became a stay-at-home mother when Lyle and Eric were born. Meanwhile, the family moved to California, where Jose eventually became the head of RCA Records, where he was involved in signing big-name artists like the Eurythmics and Duran Duran. They put on the airs of being this great, happy, together family. By the late 80s, both Lyle and Eric Menendez seemed to have bright futures ahead. 21-year-old Lyle played tennis at Princeton University, while 18-year-old Eric was a highly ranked tennis player in his own right. But in the years leading up to the murders, cracks began to develop in the family's facade. Lyle was suspended from Princeton after being accused of plagiarism, while Eric was involved in several burglaries. On August 20, 1989, the brothers called police, claiming they'd found their parents murdered in the den of their family's Beverly Hills mansion. Don't tell my parents. Pardon me? Don't <laughs> police arrived to find a gruesome crime scene. Jose and Kitty Menendez had received so many wounds, 15 blasts from a pair of shotguns, that they were virtually unrecognizable. Given the brutal nature of the murders, investigators' first suspicion was that the couple were victims of a mob hit. At the time, the Los Angeles Times even printed a quote from an unnamed source that supported the theory, saying, It was definitely a message killing. There's no question it's organized crime. But as time went on, it became clear that, although there may have been a message, it wasn't from the mafia. Following their parents' deaths, the Menendez brothers embarked on a lavish spending spree, utilizing their inheritance, estimated at $14 million, to buy Rolex watches, clothes, and cars, stay in luxury hotels, and hire bodyguards. The brothers were out there spending money like it was water. They started a company together, Menendez Investment Enterprises, and even expressed political aspirations. Both brothers also began seeing psychiatrist Dr. Jerome Ozeal. Eric Menendez, who was developing an ulcer from stress, admitted to Ozeal what he and Lyle had done. The session was recorded, and the psychiatrist's mistress heard the recording and called the police. Both brothers were arrested in March 1990, but it would be more than two years before their indictment. While the taped confession seemed like a slam dunk for the prosecution, the question of whether it would be admissible in court was a bone of contention that delayed the trials. It was just the first leg of a long, drawn-out legal battle. The Menendez brothers' defense team argued that the boys had been emotionally and sexually abused by their father. They said he'd been demanding in terms of their athletic pursuits, and their former swim coach confirmed this in a 1990 interview with the Los Angeles Times, saying, it seemed like Jose was so competitive, he was doing everything he could to try to make him better. But he was so completely overbearing, it had the opposite effect. Eric had so much less self-confidence because everything he did was never good enough. As the prosecutor, I knew it was plain old greed. After seven years and two mistrials, Lyle and Eric Menendez were found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. The verdict, delivered on April 17, 1996, brought an end to a courtroom drama that became famous for its theater in an era when live courtroom coverage, including the O.J. Simpson trial, garnered huge TV ratings. Despite the brothers' request to be placed in the same prison, they were sent to separate facilities. But Lyle and Eric weren't alone. They'd each developed a large number of fans and admirers over the course of their multi-year, highly televised court appearances. Both got married while incarcerated, and Lyle is on his second marriage. A kiss when you come in, a kiss when you leave, you can hold hands, and um, it, it, it is, that part of it is very difficult. In 2018, Lyle was transferred from Northern California's Mule Creek State Prison down to San Diego's R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility, where his brother is detained. It was the first time in over 20 years that the Menendez brothers were in the same location, and later that year, they were assigned to the same housing unit. However, prison spokeswoman Terry Thornton told the New York Daily News, 
Just because they're in the same unit doesn't mean they've had contact yet, but it's a programming facility, meaning the inmates participate in rehabilitation programs and have the ability to interact with one another. Social media was in its embryonic stages when the Menendez brothers went to prison, but by 2021, it was everywhere. That's when hundreds of thousands of people around the world suddenly took to social media platforms like TikTok and sent letters to government officials arguing in favor of the brothers' release alongside the hashtag justice. I'm telling you now, it's all fake. And if you don't know it's fake, that pisses me off. While there's no doubt that the Menendez brothers killed their parents, Hundreds of thousands of social media users have viewed or shared videos arguing that they shouldn't have been denied the possibility of parole. The reason being their claims of emotional and physical abuse by their father were omitted from all of their trials except the first. Members of this movement reportedly call themselves the Menendez Defenders and Guardians. Los Angeles' Fox 11 spoke to several young women about why they feel the brothers, now in their 50s, should be released. They didn't kill their parents for money. They were in fear of their lives. They just wanted the abuse to stop. The brothers have run out of appeals, so the only chance they have of ever getting out of prison at this point would be if new evidence from the 30-year-old murders comes to light. In that case, they might get a new trial. There is no evidence saying they're not guilty. In a new Netflix documentary, The Menendez Brothers, set to release in October 2024, the pair will speak about the murders for the first time in decades. The film includes an interview with their cousin, Diane Vandermolen, who testified during the trial that Lyle told her his father sexually abused him. If you or someone you know may be the victim of child abuse, please contact the Child Help National Child Abuse Hotline at 1-800-4-CHILD, 1-800-422-4453 or contact their live chat services 